fractures of the coronoid fractures of the coronoid this video has been produced from a book source of master techniques in orthopedic surgery we would like to thank the editor bernard f mori citation bernard f mori 2014 master techniques in orthopedic surgery the elbow third edition walters kluwer lippincott williams wilkins introduction unlike other topics when to fix a coronoid fracture is a bit complex and requires a more detailed discussion the fracture uncommonly exists as an isolated injury so comments regarding the ligaments and radial head are in order collateral ligaments i assume any coronoid fracture must cause some injury to one or both of the collateral ligaments hence my exposure usually involves a posterior incision from which i can inspect each ligament complex as necessary as discussed in the appropriate chapter on ligament injury the lateral ligament must always be formally repaired the medial ligament will typically heal if the ulnar humeral joint is reduced and stable radial head the radial head has long been known to be important to compensate for coronoid deficiency it is this relationship that has emerged as the key as to whether the coronoid fracture needs be fixed it has been shown the radial head constitutes 60 and the coronoid 40 percent of the anterior articular surface of the elbow when the radial head is present and the collateral ligaments are intact up to 50 percent of the coronoid may be absent and the elbow will remain stable hence the value of either fixing the radial head fracture if possible or replacing the head with a prosthesis is clear in the face of these specific associated injuries coronoid as noted above the significance of a coronoid fracture is becoming somewhat clearer it depends on the integrity of the ligaments and the radial head but at least 50 percent of the process is required to have any possibility of adequate stability to be present this can be estimated by a line drawn from the tip of the olcranon to the base of the fracture figure if this line is parallel to or anterior to the ulnar shaft adequate stability is a possibility i resolve this by an examination under anesthesia pay particular attention to rotatory stability as the coronoid is especially important with these loading modes classification regan and mori have described three fracture types depending on the extent of the fracture figure as more experience has been gained with these fractures it is now recognized that these fractures are more complex currently the simple modification of the original classification includes medial and lateral oblique fractures figure however it has been recently shown that for practical matters the original classification system is probably adequate as a basis of our clinical decisions if the fragment is too small for fixation or is comminuted then a plate may be used to stabilize and orient the fracture fragments or if this is not possible a heavy number five suture is placed over the fragment or fragments which is brought to its anatomical location and tied through drill holes placed in the ulna the rigidity and stability of the construct are then assured by the application of a hinged external fixator the distraction device is maintained for three to six weeks depending upon the nature of the injury indications type l fractures need not be fixed type 2 fracture in type 2 fractures as much as 50 percent of the coronoid is involved and the elbow is considered unstable unless proven otherwise examination under anesthesia is carried out if posterior displacement occurs with less than 40 to 45 degrees of flexion the residual articulation is considered inadequate and the ulnar humeral joint must be stabilized if the fracture fragment is large enough for fixation osteosynthesis is performed type 3 fracture these injuries are the most difficult to treat as by definition the ulnar humeral joint is grossly unstable if the coronoid is a large fragment and has not been comminuted it may be fixed with a screw or plate and screws and the joint will be stable if comminuted a stabilization plate is employed indications for fracture fixation type 2 fractures with an intact fixed or replaced radial head and in which the elbow is grossly unstable when flexed less than 50 or 60 degrees all type 3 fractures 
isolated anteromedial coronoid fractures resulting in varus overload. These fractures have a propensity for articular incongruity, subluxation, and arthritis. Relative contraindications. For fear of ectopic bone formation, avoid surgical exposure of the coronoid if greater than 5 to 6 days after injury, but only if the ulnohumeral joint is reduced. A persistently unstable joint, with articular incongruity, is less successfully treated later than is an elbow with heterotopic ossification. If necessary, perform a percutaneous application of the external fixator. Pre-operative planing. Assess the extent of fracture. The use of 3D CT imaging has greatly facilitated this essential requirement. If less than 50% of the coronoid is involved, a line from the tip of the olecranon through the base of the fracture is parallel to or intersects the line of axis of the ulna posterior to the olecranon. When greater than 50% has been fractured, this line intersects the long axis distally, see figure. Preparation for surgery includes several considerations. The posterior skin incision affords both medial and lateral deep exposure. When a radial head fracture requires removal, a lateral approach may be adequate, as the lateral stabilizers are invariably compromised. If the radial head is intact, or the ulnar nerve is symptomatic, the deep medial approach is used. Usually, the LCL is disrupted, so this is carefully repaired along with the coronoid fixation. Finally, in those instances in which the fixation is tenuous, an external fixator is applied. Technique. ORIF, screw fixation. Exposure. Medial column, Hotchkiss, from posterior skin incision position. The patient is supine, an elbow table is applied, and the arm is draped free with a non-sterile tourniquet. Incision. With the arm initially across the chest, we prefer a posterior incision to allow medial exposure of the fracture as well as lateral exposure of the lateral collateral ligament should this be necessary. A 12 cm posterior incision is made just medial to the tip of the olecranon figure. A subcutaneous flap is elevated medially exposing the ulnar nerve posterior to the intermuscular septum. The intermuscular septum is identified and preserved or released from the medial epicondyl if ulnar nerve transposition is anticipated. Figure. The soft tissues are elevated from the anterior aspect of the septum, and the periosteal elevator elevates the brachialis from the anterior cortex of the distal humerus. The pronator is elevated leaving a portion of the FCU as a cuff for reattachment at closure. Take care to preserve the medial collateral ligament. The muscle flap is elevated from the capsule, figure. The fibers of the brachialis are swept from the anterior capsule, which is divided for exposure of the joint surface with a longitudinal incision. The fracture is identified, figure, and reduced with a sharp tenaculum. A 0.045 or 0.062 K wire stabilizes the fracture, figure. For some fractures, type 2, fixation with a 2.7 mm screw is adequate, figure. Ideally, we prefer two screws if the fragment is large enough, and there is little chance of comminuted, comminuted fracture less than 50%, open reduction and internal fixation is impossible. Suture technique. If the fracture is relatively small or comminuted, but the elbow is unstable to examination, even after fixing the collateral ligaments and replacing or fixing the radial head, the fragments may be stabilized by a suture technique. Two drill holes are placed in the middle of the base of the fractured coronoid figure. A number 5 suture is passed through one of the tunnels and captures the fragments and the attached anterior capsule figure. Care is taken to assure the fragments are pulled into place in a fashion that places the bone fragments close to the joint surface. The suture is again passed through the second hole with a technique of choice. The fragment is reduced, and the sutures are tied with the elbow at 90 degrees of flexion. Figure. An external fixator is routinely applied. Plate fixation exposure is similar to that described above. However, the FCU and pronator teres interval is divided distally to better expose the anterior medial humerus. Figure. 
Developing this interval distal to the sublime tubercle and excision of the capsule reveal the coronoid figure. Fragments are reduced. This sometimes may require temporary K wire fixation. A 3 to 5 hole recon plate or a pre contoured plate is applied in a way to buttress the reduced comminuted fragments figure. As for virtually all coronoid fractures, a hinged fixator is applied figure. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe my YouTube channel. Orthopedics Trauma in YouTube. Subscribe.